Hello everyone, Genesis Writer here. The following is an in-depth analysis of my own gameplay from an online match I got while playing the Big Team Battle playlist in Halo 5. The game type was Slayer and the map was Deadlock, a reimagined Forge version of Halo 3's popular Big Team Battle map, Standoff. Now the purpose of this kind of video is to take an inexperienced to average player walk them through my own gameplay from an online match using Halo 5 Guardians built-in theater mode as you can see right now and give them the tools they need to become better than average or at least to learn how to play this map better and to improve uh, their own lethality in the online battlefield of Halo 5 Guardians. Now all these tips and tricks and opinions I'm going to be showing you are uh, my own. There's I'm sure many popular and uh, very skilled ways to play this map and so I'm not saying this is the only way to play obviously um, however I would like to mention that during the preseason of Halo 5 Guardians I did place or rank champion number 13 when Big Team Battle was ranked as sadly now it is not and so uh, this gameplay was kind of a hard-fought game because a lot of people I see playing this map don't know how to play it or get very confused while playing it because of the spawning um, in Slayer and in uh, Strongholds, it can be very difficult. Um, the only other thing I'll mention before we begin our analysis is that theater mode is glitched. And what I mean by that is when you see me aiming in this film, it does not represent how the gameplay appeared live on my screen. It's very glitchy and laggy. It doesn't mean the game was lagging when I played in it. It just means that the server that's viewing the game uh, was lagging behind a little bit and so my shots are going to not be necessarily on point in the film even though they were when I get the kills when you see them. So just a heads up warning on that. But without further ado, let's get into this gameplay. I'm going to start this gameplay off sprinting for the camo. I like to rush around this little edge to get to it just a little bit faster. I'm going to hold down the pickup button to pick it up. I crouch here just for a second to let the camo congeal around my armor before I push out. Sometimes players are really, really uh, offensive with pushing up and trying to shoot or nade you off spawn, so I'm just trying to hang behind this pillar so that they can't shoot me and reveal my location. You should be aware that in Halo 5 Guardians, when you have the active camouflage power-up, you do not appear on radar unless you're sprinting, thruster packing, or spartan charging. You can literally move, as in pull your anal left analog stick fully in one direction and move at full speed and you still will not appear on radar. This is an extremely, extremely advantageous way to use camo and I'll be pulling it off multiple times during this gameplay. But as you can see, my whole concern is getting to the railgun off the left off the start of this gameplay. Now I'm going to be using this barrier in front of me so that when I fire shots, I can let the camo, as you can see, recongeal around my armor so that I am less visible to the enemy team. Louis is doing a great job in the Ghost contesting this enemy uh, Gun Goose player. And I put a shoot off on him, again, remaining behind cover so the enemy players don't see me. Now, because I can see that this player is engaged with my teammates across the way and these other players are not looking at me, I'm going to go for this railgun. Be aware that when you pick up the railgun, this green icon that's floating above it appears for everyone. So when you pick up the railgun, everyone who's looking at it is going to see that it disappeared. And many players are watching for a camo guy to push up like this. So be aware of that. I'm going to trade my assault rifle for the railgun because I obviously want to keep a long range weapon in my back pocket. Now, here I want to uh, break this down very slowly for you guys in case you guys don't know how to use the railgun. I'm going to give you straight off a really advanced tip, or should I say two. Number one, you really, really need to be zooming with the railgun. Make sure that you're looking in the dead center of your screen as I'll zoom up on here. That circle is what you're going to be looking for, but more importantly, you also want to be watching for when and where you're charging. Notice that little blue bar charging at the bottom of the reticle, the aiming reticle. As soon as that blue bar touches, as soon as it touches those horizontal left and right lines, so the left and right of the circle, you can immediately release the trigger and early fire the bolt of your railgun. What this means is that you don't have to manually wait for the railgun to fire and just continue holding down the trigger until the railgun fires. You can manually release the bolt early as long as you see 
this. Boom. And the bars reach the two lines on the side. As long as you see that, you should be able to release the trigger and insta-fire your railgun like so. Get the protector metal on my teammate. My camo is at half charge, so I quickly take out this guy for the double kill. That's a power position that you see on the map over here. It's very important to keep in mind that both satellite dishes are uh, very important to keep in mind. In fact, I'll mention this briefly right now so that you guys are aware. Let me zoom in on this uh, in the bottom left-hand corner so that you know. When I'm going throughout this film below my radar, I, my, I'm zooming right now so my radar is invisible, but you see these little words in the bottom left-hand corner? That's telling you where I am on the map because I'm on the red dish. They call it the red platform, okay? Throughout this film, you'll be able to look in the bottom left-hand corner and see the call-out for where I'm standing on the map. Very useful for those of you beginner players who want to get a better viewing experience and learn where I'm going with this gameplay. Now, I wanted to briefly pause here and say two things. Number one, when you fire a railgun shot, you are incredibly visible when you have camo and when you fire it. The reason I'm firing at this vehicle, even though it doesn't have a gunner, is because the railgun does an insane amount of damage versus vehicles. And the Warthog and Ghost on this map are pretty deadly in the right hand, so I'm trying to take it out or at least put as much damage on it as much as possible. I'm going to go into third person, though, and show you just how visible I am after firing, firing the shot. I also want you to notice how I'm staying semi-close to this cover so I can crouch down behind it and let my, sh my camo recongeal around my armor, as I said before. Now, this uh, Warthog did have basically full health, but watch as it runs away and is now on fire. One more railgun shot will take this Warthog completely out and blow it up, exploding anyone near it or inside of it, which is great for me. Um, as I, uh, back behind cover, I have three more railgun bolts left. I was gonna push up on the left here, but I can see my teammates are huddling around this radar dish, and my camo is about to, uh, go out, so I need to get behind some cover before it goes out. Now, Buffield is anchoring behind the way here, and I'll go hint to him in just a second. But I, again, catch sight of the Warthog on top of the enemy base on fire. This was a really lucky spot on my part, and it really goes to show a great example of what the railgun does against vehicles. And I wanna apologize here. Yes, the glare you're seeing from the sun really is that bad. Um, whoever forged the map did not put a piece in front of the sun like you're seeing me now put the satellite. They should have put a piece along the backwards portion of the map so that the sun wasn't this bright. It does actually look this bad on my own screen, not just on the YouTube video you're watching now. So I zoom in with my railgun, of course, like I told you earlier, you need to be doing that. And then I railgun from long distance, getting an easy double kill, and the Warthog destroyed metal. My teammate's laying down shots on the top of their base, and one of my teammates pushes to the top there uh, with Omar SECS. Now I'm going to push back to my teammate, uh, Bubfield, who is doing a great job of anchoring. And I'm going to briefly explain what that means. So what Bubfield's doing, and I'm going to very quickly switch to his POV here. What Bubfield is doing is he is essentially holding down this back area of the map so that the enemy players don't spawn here. Now I'm going to give a little bit of an explanation on why Deadlock in Halo 5, this map specifically, is so difficult and frustrating to play whilst playing the game types Slayer and Strongholds. The number one reason is because the enemy team can spawn anywhere on the map, including your own base, including behind your own base, when you're standing literally on top of your own base, beside your own base, when you are still standing on top of your own base. It is so easy to get flanked, spawn killed, vehicle run overed, that's not even a word, but you get my frustration level. It's really, really annoying. So what Bubfield is doing is he's blocking a key and a very, very typical spawn, which is this back area. If you stand on this rock or in this general vicinity, you will completely block the enemy team from spawning over here. And oftentimes, one player being here is really all you need to control your side of the map. Sometimes you'll get random stragglers, like you see this guy who spawns out here in the middle of nowhere and then rush over, like you see this guy has done here. But that's pretty rare. In general, you do want to be blocking the back of your base with a player like you see Bubfield doing here. And I'll show you what it looks like on the other side of the map. This map is symmetrical, meaning both sides are loosely the same. 
There's a tunnel back here just like the one Budfield's guarding over there. These tunnels are the key main abrupt spawning points you will see on this map. Um, the others, like I said, are out by the dishes. I don't know why that is the case of this map, but it's sincerely broken in Slayer and Stronghold. That is why Budfield took this role, and he told me he was going to take this role before this gameplay even started. So shout out to him for sure. Continuing on with the film, I hear Budfield call out to me in the chat that he's being pushed on the side, and sure enough, I see Louis die over here. So I'm pushing up very carefully, and one of the reasons I'm doing this is I'm kind of using the cover here of these barriers and these, uh, should I say, boxes that are on top. I don't know whether there's players over here or not, so I can turn on spectator mode or uh, outline mode to see there aren't any players over here, but I'm just being careful. So I'm pushing up, and I get shot from the left. That's probably a guy on our satellite, the power position that I mentioned earlier. Very deadly position to be in, as you can have a carbine, as this guy is currently shooting uh, at me with right now. Two carb one carbine spawns on either satellite dish. Now what you're about to see me do here, and I'll kind of go through it pretty slowly, is I double tap the switch weapons button to cancel the fire of the bolt currently locked into my railgun. Now that's about the latest you can cancel it. Don't double tap the Y button or whatever button you use to switch weapons any later than that or you will fire the bolt regardless. You do have to be very fast about it, but it allows you to save railgun shots while you're doing this. It's a very, very useful technique. And you're gonna see me do this again right here as I cancel and YY out of the shot. Now I think I might be able to hit this guy, but I do get hit from the left here and get descoped. I want to uh, briefly show you uh, what happened here, so let me rewind the film. So after seeing this guy again, you can see I kind of jump up uh, a second time, expecting that he might be there, but I get shot from the left and descoped, which means my shot goes off. Now I have no shield and what I'm fully expecting him to do is grenade me, which is exactly what he ends up doing. He ends up throwing a pretty well thrown grenade and I thrust her pack behind the box to my left. Always expect this when this kind of thing occurs. When you're behind the center box, by the way, this plasma pistol does spawn here. When you're behind the center box, it's really hard to nade off of this back wall. So that's a pretty good job on my part. Again, moving to the left and hanging behind cover while my shields regenerate. I'm waiting for him to peek back out again, but I end up being shot from the right. Knowing that this player on the satellite dish could peek out at any moment, I have to turn and deal with this player very quickly. And once again, remember what I said earlier about how players spawn out of here and then suddenly push up on you without warning? That's precisely what happened here. So I jump up and quickly railgun. There's no need to zoom as I get the killing spree. Now I want to briefly point out something at the top of your screen here. So what I need to do here is I need to wait behind cover till this yellow bar fully depletes. Once that yellow bar fully depletes, then my shields will begin regenerating. It's very important to keep that in mind. That's why I'm hanging behind cover. And I did just switch out my empty railgun for that plasma pistol I mentioned that was earlier here on top of the base. Now I want to point out something. When you charge shoot the plasma pistol and hit someone with it, it obviously tracks them and fully removes their shields. But one advanced tip that a lot of players are not doing, and it's actually a fail when you're using the plasma pistol if you don't do this, at long ranges, particularly this range, this is a pretty incredible range to be using the plasma pistol, right? Wrong. You can zoom with it and it extends the charge shot red reticle extended range of the tracking of the plasma bolt. Watch what happens here. It's a little glitchy because it's theater mode again, like I said, but I am able to track and noob combo him off the satellite dish, which is a pretty advanced maneuver if I do say so myself. A lot of early players wouldn't know to do that. Now, I'm being again grenaded from behind, so I switch over to the left, left box like I did earlier, just trying to see if I can get another easy pick here with my plasma pistol. Now, this is a fail on my part. I was not prepared for this player who pushes up on the right here. I did get a red reticle on him and did remove his shield, but he backs down as two of his teammates push up here on my teammate, and my teammate actually ends up falling on top of the base. Now, I spawn luckily next to our camo, so I'm going to push right back up and try to help Bubfield, who's again anchoring. But I remember that our camo will be up. And I, here's where I want to talk a little bit about timing the camo power up. 
So right now, I'm about to grab the camo at 13.24, and I'll actually uh, zoom up on this a little bit so you guys can see it in the bottom right-hand corner. This timer in the bottom right-hand corner starts at 16 minutes. It counts down whichever team you know has the most kills by the time the timer goes out, or whichever team wins by getting 100 kills will win the match, of course. But two minutes from when you grab any power-up in Halo 5, this could be a camo, an overshield, whatever it is, two minutes from that time, the power-up will come up again. This is not like power weapon spawns where they come up every three minutes, regardless of whether you pick them up or not. Uh, power-ups like this, so for example, uh, the next camo will be up at 11.24, just minus two minutes off of that first minute mark. So 13 minus 2 is 11. The next camel will be up at 11.24. Now I can see that the next railgun is going to be up in a few seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and position myself to grab this railgun. My teammate's kind of running around here. I'm trying to back this player down so that he's not peeking out when I'm going for the railgun. But another player actually ends up walking out and seeing that the railgun is going to spawn and kind of, kind of starts going for it. So again, I try to back him down. You can see how quickly you go back into camo, and you can see that when I'm throwing these grenades, which is exactly what I intended to do to this player, I intended to pin him behind this barrier so he can't move and throw grenades. Look how, at how when I throw this grenade, how literally I don't come out of camo at all. Okay, this is a very interesting and unique property to Halo 5's camo. You don't seem to come out of camo very much at all when you're throwing grenades. I don't quite know why that is. But my teammate actually ends up cleaning up that guy. I grab the railgun because no one's looking at me right now. And this time, I'm going to actually try to push up and get some sight lines on the top of their base. Uh, with this incredible glare from the sun, that is a really good zoom charge shot there. A little bit hard to see. I was able to spot that player, luckily. Now, my camo did just run out. This is a, a, the maximum range for the railgun, is these players just outside the range here. You don't want to actually be firing at players moving at this distance unless you're very desperate, and I'm certainly not. I just grabbed the railgun. I don't want to desperate my shots here. So I need to really get them up close to me, but if one of these players was standing still, like if this guy was like crouching up here on top of this rock, I would absolutely zoom in and try to shoot him, and it's very, very possible to do so. Much more possible than Halo 4's railgun. So I'm waiting for a guy to push up here, but I see that they're nading me, so I know that there's a guy here somewhere. So then I kind of peek out and see two people looking at me, and what this means is I have to back down. There's no way I'm going to survive if two players are looking at me. You die way too fast in Halo 5 for you to be trying to peek out like that. But I do end up noticing this guy in the power position on their red satellite. So I rail getting him in the back, getting another protector medal for my teammate. I hesitate there for a second, but I immediately push into the bottom of the base. This is what you want to do to kind of escape here. Now this doorway I just passed, you see this little door? And I'm going to go into this base here. You see this little uh, window right here? Both that doorway and this window are controlled by this green switch. You just hit the switch and it closes the window and the doorway. As you can see in the bottom left hand corner, this is called Red Sneaky. You should be using your radar at all times. If a player is on the same level as you, they will appear as bright red on your radar. If they're not on the same level of you, level as you, in other words, in the same, like, uh, should I say, vertical level as you, like up and down wise, they will not be bright red on their radar. It'll be like a dark red if they're not on the same level as you. So I'm crouching around, being very careful. See this guy in a Warthog, and like I said earlier, you need to be putting your shots on the Warthog. I am a little bit down in BR ammo, so I go ahead and switch for the DMR. The DMR is much better than the BR on this map for sure, as it has much more extended range. I can see my teammate gets immediately taken out by this guy, but I'm looking at my radar very carefully. I know the guy to the right on my radar is above me on top of the base. Okay, I know that guy's there, but I want you to look at the other dot on my radar to the left. I don't know where that guy is. That guy could be above me on this next level. So just to make sure, I check, and sure enough, there he is. I railgun him in the back while this ghost pushes in on me. A second ghost, actually not the one that was shooting me in the back, charges in, so I quickly duck back down the stairway, avoiding all his shots, hide in this little cubby hole, which is very unique, and because I hide there, this guy just literally doesn't see me, and he ends up charging in and give me, giving me a pretty awesome railgun double kill as the ghost literally explodes. Now I want to pause here and note, that ghost wasn't even on fire, and I killed it in one shot. 
be aware of this. The railgun is a devastating weapon when used correctly, especially against vehicles. I'll be probably saying that a few more times. Now, I'm kind of walking around here, but I did see that that guy who I got killed by the ghost did drop a shotgun. So because I'm in such close quarters, I'm going to go ahead and pick up the shotgun and then re-pick up my railgun so that I have both a railgun and shotgun, but I only have one railgun bolt left, and I was keeping track of that. So I need to use this last railgun bolt. I watch my radar, boom, there's the last railgun bolt for an easy kill. I re-pick up the DMR, I'm watching my radar. Those two guys are above me on the base. They're clearly not coming down the stairway. Once again, I'm kind of hiding in this cubby, using my radar very effectively. So I, I'm being very careful to stay out of sight. I see these two bright red dots on my radar. You can kind of see that. Those two guys pushed in there, didn't even see me. So I'm gonna come out here and pretty much get the easy uh, double kill. I haven't closed the window. I probably should have done that as you'll see a little later on in the film. Just being very careful to watch my radar and make sure that I don't, get, don't have someone sneak up on me. Again, in Halo 5, you just die so fast. So I look out the window and see this guy push out. This is a great angle I have. This guy has no idea where I'm shooting him from. I'm able to shoot him in the back. I'm waiting for this dot to appear on my radar, and boom, shotgun that guy in the back for the killing frenzy, which is the highest spray I actually get during this gameplay. The reason I'm sprinting here very suddenly is because there's only one guy above me on my radar. So I'm thinking I can bait him to another part of the base. I got like four or five kills down here. They've got to know I'm here by now. So I really need to push out and get away from this area. So I quickly sprint, jump thruster pack, and then crouch. This guy ends up baiting via my dot into the base, and I shotgun him for another kill. I'm trying to be very, very careful here so I don't get snuck up on. My radar does not extend all the way down this hallway, so that's why I'm just kind of being really careful here. Um, we've almost reached the midway score mark in the gameplay. I can see the power weapons are coming up here, so I'm going to kind of jump out here, and I'm looking specifically for the camo. If the camo was up, I might be able to sprint for it, grab it, and go for some of these power weapons, but it's not up, so I fake back into the base. Be aware your shotgun does have a light on the end of it. That's how you can recognize someone has a shotgun. It's pretty easy to spot. Now my teammate's to my left. He engages this player, and so I help my teammate, likely saving his life, getting the assist. I'm just letting him clean up that kill. Now the weapons are coming up pretty shortly. What we are about to see is a pretty bad fail, and I'm actually going to slow this down. Right here, I guess I was watching my radar and didn't see this player in the window. This player is only is only seen visible for a few seconds, but that guy does end up uh, killing me with a DMR. And yes, I do kind of die behind a wall here, but uh, like I said earlier in the film, that's because it's Halo 5 Guardians theater mode. It's not a live gameplay. So what that means is that the shots are going to register really strange. Now there is a battle rifle that spawns in this back tunnel of the base, and there is a plaza pistol that spawns right here in the back of both bases in the tunnel. This is the tunnel that people spawn in super easily, like I mentioned earlier in the film. I'm going to go ahead and pick up this plaza pistol. You want to be picking up these weapons because they're useful because of the long-range zoom. Now, above field, our anchor just died, so I'm going to be pushing up here with Omar, and he points out that there's a railgun on the floor here, and I pick that up. Uh, shout out for, to him for making me aware of that. Now, this guy has a Spartan laser for sure, and I'm just going to kind of jump uh, over to here and peek shot this guy. This is a really useful technique that I don't show enough of in this gameplay, actually. You can just literally uncrouch and peek and already be zoomed and peek over and just peek shot people. It's very useful if they already know where you are, or you just want to peek out and see where enemy players are. Now, I would also like to mention that there is a DMR that spawns on top of the base, which your anchor should grab, of course, and a DMR that spawns down here. Um, if Believe it or not, I've actually been anchoring like Bubfield has been doing during this film. I've run over to grab the DMR only to have enemy players spawn behind me in the tunnel. So just be wary if you're in an anchor position starting out that that might happen. Now, I see my teammates die over here. I see the ghost. Once again, it's not on fire, but I take it out with one shot. I railgun the Warthog, and instead of thruster packing out, I should have seen that this red laser was honing in on me, and I end up dying from it. That's an excellent spartan laser shot from that enemy player that's actually very difficult to do 
with the Spartan Laser in Halo 5. Um, it's just difficult to take out players like that. Now I, I end up spawning on the opposite base. This is a really cool uh, weapon spawn that a lot of people don't know. A Hydra spawns in the back of both bases. Another good weapon to grab if you're the anchor for your team. So I'm going to go ahead and pick it up here. A lot of players don't grab this weapon. And I'm going to show you two pretty good kills with it before I die. I'm going for the active camouflage, which is on their side. So again, I'm timing it. So it's 8.37 when I just grabbed it. So it's going to be 6.37 when the next active camouflage comes up on this side. I don't know for our side when it will be up. Now right here, you see in the bottom left here how I have this sort of uh, triangular lock-on on this player. That is because I zoomed in and let my turning reticle lock on to him. The game does that automatically. When you're within a certain distance of a player, when you have a Hydra, it will lock onto them. Once you see this red reticle appear around the player, you can then uh, move your reticle, like pull it to the right or left to angle your rockets around. So for example, if this guy back down behind this satellite area, I want to angle my rockets around here to be able to hit him if he's standing right here, which is why I pull my reticle so far up to the right to angle my rockets off to the right to hit him. It only takes two rockets to kill a player, and I'd like to point out that the Hydra is an automatic weapon, which means you can hold down the trigger and fire all the rockets at once. This is definitely a long-range covert weapon as I get the Hydra kill here, and I'm going to take out a second player in a second power position on the blue satellite here. As I uh, show firing three rockets, again, I'm going to kind of go into third person here. This rocket uh, zooms in. He hits one, hits two. Now look at this third rocket I fire. Look at how it curves around. It's as if it's still locked on to the player. This is what happens when the rocket doesn't run into a surface. It curves around and re-hits the location that you locked onto or the player you've locked onto. So that's why you might want to fire a lot of rockets at once in case the player does peek out again or something of that nature. Now, unfortunately here, I get a little greedy, and I'm not watching my radar. A guy pushes up on me with a Hydra, shoots me with a Hydra rocket, and then melees me and takes me out. The game is almost tied. We're one kill ahead of the enemy team at 63 to 63. The game is tied right now. So I'm trying to push up here on the left and regain that position that I lost just now on the map. The power weapons are not coming up, and I don't see any players watching this. Uh, I do see players, though, on the top of the base, and they're watching this right-hand side, so I'm assuming that my teammate Bubfield, who's over there, um, in a ghost or something, yeah, there he is. He's distracting them a lot, and this other teammate's distracting them, so I'm going to try to take advantage of this opportunity and push up. This is really important to do, and the play I make right now, notice my Hydra is not on the ground, because that earlier player who killed me also had a Hydra, so he picked up my ammo. This is a really important play to make as I wait for my shields to regenerate. I call out to my teammate across the map. Hey, look, dude, I need uh, I need teammate support here. Um, I need you to come over here and help me out here because there's players on top of the base. My teammate flies over to help me, and we end up making a pretty good push uh, on the left here. At this point, I actually hear a turret. I thought that was a Warthog turret, so I hide like a freaking noob in this little uh, cubby hole because I'm afraid we're about to get turreted in the back by a Warthog. That's actually not the case. So I pop back out, communicating that to my teammate, and then jump up here. Now, this is a great example of the shots not being on point because it's theater mode. I quickly push over and headshot this guy, even though the film shows it being very laggy. I'm waiting again for that bar at the top of the screen to count all the way down. Then when it counts all the way down, my shield and health bar both regenerate and able to push back up with a close call metal. My teammate trades out with me because he's, I believe, low shields behind me. Then he jumps out again in front of me because he has full shields. I'm t telling him that we need to watch this spawn point, okay? We need to both push up and watch this area back here because they could easily spawn here. So until we get to this position and verify that there's no enemy players here, we need to watch this position carefully, okay? Now... I'm going to break down this kind of portion of the film a little bit strangely, all right? I get a call out when I'm right here that a guy's on the dish, and I end up long-range DMRing a guy across the map, and I'm not going to show that. What I'm going to show is observer mode and where the players are and what I should have been looking at. What I want to show is that players will actually spawn where I just predicted them to spawn off to the left. 
I can get that long range DMR kill over here. But as I push to my left here, I want you to notice that players actually come up on our side on the left here. Notice their players just spawn here. Okay, he just spawned there out in the open. Even though I was standing near this rock, it's very important to actually stay again on this rock so that players won't be back here. And I should not have been so distracted by that guy out in the center of the map because my teammate does end up dying as a result. And these guys now have a three kill lead on us in this very intense match of 18 battle. Uh, that was not the guy I just shot earlier. That was actually a teammate he traded out with. There was actually three players here. Um, so they're doing a great job of kind of staying alive there. Now, I get a really bad kind of spawn out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, my teammate's actually being shot behind me, drawing a lot of that fire. So I'm pushing up here, looking on the right, trying to be very careful about my positioning. You can see Louis fly across my screen, the ghost there. This ghost ends up charging me. Louis flies in to save my life as I stay alive behind this tree, using my radar to predict the movements of the ghost and stay alive. We're one kill behind, so getting this active camouflage is huge. And this right here is pretty much a game-changing moment of the film, one of the proudest moments I had during this gameplay. What you're about to see is me use the camo correctly as compared to a lot of other players who would not use the camo correctly. This, now notice these players kind of uh, spawn back here. Notice that player spawned back there in that tunnel. So I'm being very careful to stay off the radar. My teammate's gonna run up. These two players spawn here, so I gotta be very careful. Now, most average players, when a score is tied like this, would probably try to engage and get an early kill. I don't do that. This is how I prefer to use the camo, and I wanna let the gameplay really speak for itself here. Because this is how you should be using the camo, to covertly back smack people, reconfigure the camo around your armor, and go for other back smacks. Because you stay off the radar, and also because this guy zooming doesn't have his radar, I'm able to easily back smack three players in a row, then help out my teammate by staying alive and drop back down into uh, this base. Now, this is unfortunate because I wasn't watching my radar. I was intent on back smacking this player and didn't notice the second guy who charges out my radar, and this is where I make a pretty bad mistake. Um, this player runs by me and actually notices me. He turns thruster packs and starts shooting. Now, I see that this player sprinted by me, and so I get distracted and turn towards him. What I should have done is continued walking, because as you can see, this player just chooses to shoot the wall, and he doesn't even shoot the stairway. So I should have continued to walk up the stairway, but as it is, I make a pretty bad play and try to engage him as my camera's running out, and I end up being backsmacked from behind by more people spawning in the base. That's a kind of unfortunate play, but you can now see the score we're now multiple kills ahead of the enemy team, only nine kills remaining in the game. So I'm gonna thruster pack over here. I see these guys continuing to spawn over here. Notice where all the enemy players are right now. It's just insane, they're all over there. But I think that there may be more guys spawning in this guy, which is actually not true at this moment. So this guy gets the early shot on me. I'm just trying to stay alive so he doesn't get an easy kill. He nades across the map and misses me. That's why I'm kind of hanging back here, is because I want to try to, you know, make it hard for me to be naded. Now, I expect this guy to immediately jump out and challenge me, but he actually gets in a ghost. He actually focuses in on my teammate here, or um, just actually in a second. I'm able to fake him out around the tree. He doesn't see me, but I'm getting pegged by this guy on top of the base. Now, this is a pretty uh, uh, clutch play I make right here to try to stay alive. I just decide that I really need to get out of this position. I sprint, uh, crouch, and jump thruster pack over. This ghost is flying over around, kills my teammate, and I'm able to fake him out using my radar. I'm actually able to fake him out so long that I'm able to actually regenerate my shields during this entire process while gaining a distraction medal. This guy weakens my shields and I am eventually cleaned up, but I'm the entire time I'm calling out like mad for my teammates to come help me. This is a great stalemate on my part because it really frustrates the enemy team and doesn't give this ghost the opportunity to take out multiple people in the multiple people in a row. This is such a close game, you know. We only need one more kill to win. I, I go ahead and end up giving away a death there, but we all already get the victory. 191, that was a pretty good game. So I'm gonna go actually to the stat screen here. So this is how I performed at the end of this game. Uh, I got 28 score and seven deaths. So guys, thank you for watching this film. I really hope it helped you in your own gameplay on 
the Halo 5 Big Team Battle Map Deadlock. I hope to be doing more of these gameplay analysis videos in the future. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend. It helps out a lot. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section down below, and I will for sure answer you if I uh, deem your comment worthy of answering. Thank you. See you in the next video. Peace.